Hey guys, it's Bear with the Gimpy Camper. For those of you that saw the generator project that we did, that's been working out great so far. I've not used it on a trip yet, but it's nice to come over here to the camper and just uh, have power whenever I need it. And I noticed whenever I put that thing in that there was a, an area right behind the generator tray that was basically useless because it's too deep really for me to get to from this side. The generator's on the other side. And so I was trying to come up with something to, to put there. Now, you may have already seen also my video on the Vire air compressor, the 400, I think it's 400P model that I had, the one that I'm so unhappy with. And so I got to thinking, well, if I always have power and I got space there that's big enough for an air compressor, then why don't we put an air compressor in there? Seems like a good idea to me. Now it just happened to be around Black Friday when I had this idea. And so I started looking at the process of air compressors. So I was actually in Home Depot searching for some accessories for the generator project when I walked by the air compressors and I saw they had a little anvil in there. It was like one gallon or something and it wasn't very expensive. It was like 60 bucks and that's kind of what started getting me thinking about this. But then when I started looking at prices and it being Black Friday, I started looking around and I'm a big advocate of Harbor Freight tools, oh, they're higher tier tools at least, and I, that's what my big air compressor is at home, and it's worked great for about four or five years now. And so along with that, I thought, well, I can just get one of their pancake air compressors, and it's like 120 bucks. Well, I started looking online because it was the week before, the week of Thanksgiving, it was early in the week, and I found this rigid i put a picture here uh, and they had a porter cable both of them were 99 dollars, so they were both cheaper than the harbor freight tools and i like harbor freight tools but if i can get something else for just as cheap or cheaper i'm going with something else and so that's what i did i, li I went with the rigid because it has two airports and it was rated a little bit better on the website i have also had experience with the uh, porter cable and i been happy with that what I've used it my stepdad has one but we're going to show you how we decided to tackle this problem so those of you that know me know that I tend to overdo things right so after I decided I was gonna put an air compressor in this beast I said oh we're gonna make it real easy to use and so we're gonna put a, we're gonna plumb in an airline I did it in my house and then I realized it wasn't really worth it and so You'd think I'd realize that before this. And so when I was at Home Depot looking around at different stuff, I did decide I was gonna plumb it in with uh, just, just air hose instead of pipe. Now, when you start looking at that, it sounds real easy. You just need a couple of T fittings and some other assorted fittings and a piece of uh, hose that's about 50 foot. And you have everything you need because my plan was to put an outlet on each side in the storage and then plumb it through under the basement and back and put an outlet next to the tires in the back and that way all you gotta do is turn the air compressor on plug your little holes in down by the tires air the tires up now after i was in home depot going through this monstrosity of a math problem of all the different things because they don't just make things that are or for this really and so I started looking at brass fittings and brass fittings were cheaper than what little bit you could find in the air compressor section and you just had to buy like hose clamps to go on them and so i was looking at that and i was on like plan d there in the store because i was like i'm not going to this store four times a day like i usually do with the project you know and what ended up happening is i had my final plan i ended up having about probably $60 in brass fittings. And then I was like, what are you doing, Barrett? What are you doing? And so what we ended up doing is just putting a small section of hose to the air compressor. The air compressor's in the middle back here. I'll show you pictures of that. And put a small section of hose that comes out to both sides. And so back here, you got this little piece of orange hose that, that comes up. I have the hose and electric cord zip tied together as well as a drainage port there that we'll go over in a minute. And same thing on the other side, just the hose comes out on the other side. So what do I want to use this thing for? I want to use it to air up tires. You got this, 
you know, I got two uh, pieces of this quarter inch hose here that coils up. I think that it's 20 feet a piece if it's really nice under the generator tray. And so that's where I've decided to store this stuff. So you just get the hose out after you pump the air compressor up. You hook the blue hose into that orange piece of hose back here. And voila. Great stuff, right? So then that got me thinking, if I got an air compressor, because I got power all the time, I can always have my air compressor, then why don't I put the impact wrench in the camper? So we're gonna be like a full service shop, people. One additional thing that I wanted to do this for is to winterize the camper. I've started using air to do that. I'm still working on that technique a little bit. I got something else uh, in the works for it because while I was at Home Depot, I did get like a portable pressure regulator, put it on a piece of hose, and that way I could just hook it up and blow the lines out. But that little regulator I got was crap. So I ordered one from Vire for their winterizing kit, and we'll see how that works. The reason that I wanted that pressure regulator on a piece of hose is because I don't wanna to have to climb up in this thing and regulate the pressure, right? So I wanna leave it high enough where it'll air up the tires, but I wanna be able to do the winterization without having to get up in there. So the way that this system works, I leave the air compressor turned on, okay? Also, there's a power cable that comes out here by this orange piece of hose, okay? There's also an extension cord that comes out. So what I do is the power cord for the air compressor is right here. If you're at, at a park and you've got power, you can unplug this from this extension cord. You can plug it in the outlet or the strip right here, and you can power up the air compressor. If you're not at a place where you have power and you're using the generator, that's when you go to the other end of this extension cord, which is over by the generator, and you can plug that in. And that way you have generator powered air. What are some other uses for this? Well, I also made a video about using a DeWalt blower that I got to blow the slides off. But it's kind of bulky to carry around. And I got these hoses. I got air on both sides. So I can just get me a, a, one of those little blowers. Go up there. Technically you could use this, but that'd take all day, right? You want one with a big long extension. Um, hadn't found what I want there yet, so we'll take a look at that later. Here's our power cord. Here's our air hose. So when we're not using it, we just pull that off and we just hang it down in here and it just sits there. So you guys know if you've ever used an air compressor that one of the things that you can do to increase the lifespan of it is to drain it after every use and not keep air in there because condensation can get rust. And then also, if I get up in there and drain that thing all the time, then you got that rusty, watery stuff coming out in this camper, and who wants to do that, right? So that's why I have this uh, piece of, it's actually a dishwasher hose that goes up there. It was rated for enough pressure, and I have a gas fitting here on the end. And so all you do to drain it is turn this, and it drains the tank out. Any nasty, drippy stuff can drip out here on outside and that should work great in my opinion and when we're not using this it just goes down here with the air hose and just sits right there this is kind of my junk drawer over here so don't worry about that everybody's got a junk drawer right all right so over here on the generator side you got the same thing you got the power cord that's right here and now it'll come out with the generator without any problem you have the hoses that i keep under here as well as the air chuck and you have your uh, orange hose over here that your air outlet on this side that I just have a uh, hook right here just to hold that in place so that it doesn't move over and get in the way of the tray and so what my plan is just get a little section of hose hook it up right here my wet base right there boom winterize done done son so I guess the real world application means how far can I get with my airport in the front with my two coil hoses I think they're 20 feet a piece, so it should be somewhere around 40 feet. Granted, it's hard to get the exact max distance because of you don't want to break it. But 
let's see how far I can get in the realistic world. I'm going to plug our hose into our outlet. You can see we have air. And then we're going to see how far we can go. So you guys can tell I can get to the tires with just one coil hose, which is all I ever really plan on getting out anyway. Or I can go 10 feet past the end of the camper with both of them. And that would allow me to, to get to my front tires on my truck, that kind of stuff without having to move anything around. I'm pretty happy with this setup the way that it is. If you got any suggestions on what you would do differently, leave them down in the comments. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you.